Not so long ago, British Columbia MP Mark Warawa rose in the Commons, cleared his throat, and reopened a can of worms. His motion to condemn the act of sex selection abortion brings issues of life and death, rights and choice back onto the political agenda, mere months after the Commons defeated a motion by another backbencher raising similar issues. As long as I'm Prime Minister, we are not reopening uh, the abortion debate. In a moment, meet the MP at the centre of this freshly brewed storm. Then we'll have the discussion so many MPs have worked so hard to avoid. This is Context, a look at life beyond the headlines. Our first guest says he is simply asking that his fellow MPs vote to protect girls with Motion 408. Mark Warra joins us now from Vancouver. So why is this motion of condemnation, but not legislation against sex selective abortion, why is it necessary? Well, because there's 200 million missing women and girls in the world right now, creating huge problems for societies around the world. And it, we also found uh, back in June when the CBC ran their program on the national, uh, they did an investigation on ultrasound clinics, we found that gender side or sex selection is, is happening right here in Canada. But you have avoided the word abortion, calling this condemnation against sex selection pregnancy termination. You want Why that word smithing? Uh, I think it's very important that we focus on the discrimination of women and, against women and girls. Uh, it's, it, abortion is legal in Canada at all stages, but they are choosing to end a pregnancy strictly because it's a girl, and that's a violent form of discrimination against women and girls, to the point now we have a uh, global crisis. Is it a Canadian problem, though? Uh, it is. Uh, we have, uh, even if it was one, we'd have one too many, but at any time where a pregnancy is terminated because they're not happy with the sex, uh, it's blatantly wrong, it's uh, discrimination against the sex, it's, it's usually against girls. Uh, and it's creating a global problem. Canada is known as a worldwide leader uh, on human rights issues, and this is a human rights issue, and, and uh, hopefully Canada, the Parliament, will come together and give a strong voice of condemnation. But your motion got the unusual censure of being deemed unvotable, even after it had passed initial steps, and that echoes what NDP leader Thomas Mulcair said about it. This is just another attempt to reopen the abortion debate, and we're going to be opposed to it. What's your reaction to that? I, I personally do think this is an opportunity. I don't think that's a negative thing to reopen the abortion debate. I see that as a good thing. Is this, is, is, if that happens, is that a negative? Well, the focus of my motion is very narrow, and it's focusing on the discrimination against women and girls. People are choosing to end their pregnancy just because it's a girl. And uh, when the CBC ran the program in June, uh, the, the, our Conservative government came out and said, we condemn sex selection, as did the NDP. So I have in my motion, uh, it's very direct, very simple that we condemn this practice. And uh, I am, uh, the NDP at that time said they, they condemn this. And so it's quite uh, surprising that uh, the NDP would now try to make this a political issue. It shouldn't be. It, shouldn't, it should be a nonpartisan issue. Every member of parliament should be able to support what 92% of Canadians are saying is wrong. Mark Warra, MP for Langley, BC, thank you very much. Thanks, Lauren. Well, now to the debate that MPs have worked hard to avoid. Dr. Jesse McLaren is an emergency room physician and an advocate with the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada. And Aruna Papp is a social worker on honour-based violence. She's the author of Unworthy Creature, a Punjabi daughter's memoir. Aruna, you have seen firsthand the practice of gender side. Give us some understanding of this. I think it is important to understand how hidden this problem is. It's not just aborting fetuses, but it is the torture that mothers also have to go through if they have produced children who are 
females. And is it a Canadian problem? It is a big Canadian problem. What proof have we got? We've got 27 clinics that are privately owned just in Toronto area where you can walk in and you know we have the addresses and ads for example and choose your daughter. They don't say that you're going to bought your daughter but come and test what your child is going to be like who and how you're going to arrange your room okay. and you can walk in. Okay Jesse it's it sounds like a, a rather grim problem. Um, what could be wrong with putting a restriction on sex selection abortion? Um, <clears throat> well, I think it's important to talk about the context, um, as this show is called. Um, the Lancet, the world's leading medical journal, has called on Canada to develop a maternal health plan that's based on sound scientific evidence and not prejudice and that uh, restricting abortion is both hypocritical and unjust, and those are their words. But in the case of gender selection? Yes, and so so exactly, so if we actually look at the actual evidence around it, um, firstly, there's no sound scientific evidence that this is a major problem in Canada. There's been a study that, Ms. that Dr. Ray has done showing an imbalance of male to female um, uh, birth ratios. Okay, and I, let, so let's show this study because mm -hmm. here are the findings from St. Michael's Hospital study. Um, and when it came to Indian born mothers having a third child, the male to female ratio was 136 boys for every 100 girls. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's on the third pregnancy. And uh, the Toronto Star is reporting it. it it would appear that there are South Asian families strongly preferring um, boys over girls because here you've got 917 girls to 1,000 boys, further breakdown, 904 girls to 1,000 in Mississauga, 864 to 1,000. Why not declare Motion 408 that says, let's put sexual equality on the fetus? So First of all, if we look at the data, the, the actual lead author has said that the explanation for that needs to be filled in by data and not assumptions, and that's not being done. Uh, Dr. Ja, who is the director of the Global Center for Health Research, has looked at what that actually means for numbers, and it amounts to less than 1% of pregnancies of women in Canada <clears throat> from, from Indian origin. And so I think it's important to put this into context. Furthermore, to the extent that it hypothetically is a problem. I think that Motion 418 aims to further discriminate against women by restricting their access to reproductive health care. And so if our concern is girls and women, we should be expanding their access to health care, their access to jobs, their access to services. Okay, so Aruna, what about that argument that they, we're putting the emphasis on the wrong problem here? I don't think it's hypo hypothetical. First of all, I've worked with it for 30 years. And uh, the Canadian Medical uh, Association has just now, la last year, opened a special unit just to deal with South Asian women who are dealing with depression and suicide and suicide. South Asian women are the highest uh, demographic living in developed world who are committing suicides compared to men their age, compared to uh, women from host communities, compared to other immigrant communities. Why are South Asian women, educated women, killing themselves? Both of you, is it not then reasonable to just not allow sex determination until you get to the stage that a fetus is, it's unreasonable to abort it, Jesse? Um, well, the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada has been very clear that routine prenatal ultrasound and all the details that entails are a fundamental part of women's health, and they have and they have condemned um, the idea that women should be deprived of basic information about their health, even and if it results in gender-selected abortions. Yes, they 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 do not agree with restricting access to ultrasounds, if and, and if, it, if it, um, I, I completely agree that the problems of violence against women are a huge problem. And that's actually what upsets me most about this motion, is that it actually pays lip service to helping women. When in reality, I think what women need, I think that they need childcare, they need pay equity, they need services, they need health care. But this is coming from the same government that has slashed refugee health, that has closed women's health centers across the country, that, pr that refused to, uh, okay. to provide childcare. It's, okay. it, it's a point is diff not understanding the kind of problem immigrant women are facing. Yeah, even it's a life and death, not only for the child, but for the mother as well, because she is carrying a female child. All right, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Coming up, responding to the headline that sex selection abortion is the Achilles heel of the feminist movement. Columnist Barbara Kay and abortion activist Peggy Cook, next on that.